Welcome back to Mastering Mayhem. We are here to assemble the Nordic Track Commercial 2950. Let's go ahead and take the rest of the pieces out of the box and we'll take you through the assembly step by step and point out any difficulties or things that are just not commonly known. Let's do this. We have all the pieces laid out. We're just going to go through every step, show you all how this uh, is put together. And then as you see here, the serial number is right there. If Nordtrack ever asks for that, if you ever call them for any reason, this is where we're gonna start, step two. What we wanna do is get the right mast in place, attached loosely, right? We, what they're asking us to do is make this uh, power cord connection. It's showing you to pull it through the right mast here and then connect the plastic piece in the arm at the bottom. I'll show you all how to do that. They already have the um, wire tie connected to where you're gonna put the ground screw in and the ground wire. And it even tells you right here, it's the right arm. And you're gonna pull it up through the top. Again, they already have it here for you. And what you're gonna pull up through the top is this cable right here. So we're on the right side. This is what provides all the, uh, this is what provides the power to the console and you know to send commands to the motor etc and this is where you have again the ground wire so this is what you're going to pull right up through that arm using that black twisty tie wire okay so let's go ahead and do that just grab this wire here all right unravel it you take this end here and just wrap it around two three times just to make sure it doesn't loosen up as you're pulling it up through the right mast Twist it around a few times here, make it nice and secure. Just kind of push it through preliminarily. So that way when you pull it up at the top, it comes through more easily. At least that's my approach. Come up to this end, unravel, or it's just wrapped around one of the pre-threaded holes here. Okay, and just kind of pull it up through. Nothing too complicated, and you may have to reach here to help guide it. And there you have it. It's now on this end. And what I like to do is take this wire and just run it through this pre, this hole that's already here. That way it doesn't fall back through the mast when you go to install it onto the main frame of the unit. All right, so I just wanted to show you all. So it is four bolts on each upright, correct? You got one, two, one, two. So two up top, two on the side. That's for both uprights. And again, when you're done here on the inside, you don't want any of the cables pinched. The plastic uh, piece there is inserted into the right mast. Screw of the ground wire is connected and the cable is not pinched. See how it's loose like that? The reason you want it loose is because when we get this stress bar in the middle, that'll make it easier to connect that, as well as the main console up here, if these two are loose, makes it much easier to install that. And like I said up here, you have the main wire just hanging there, because you're gonna need that when we connect it to this end here on the console there, okay? Let's go on to step five. And of course, um, see how it says, make sure not to pinch the upright wire. Do not fully tighten the screws yet. Next, we're gonna get the left and right base covers right here. And you have to have these on uh, before you move forward because if you start attaching the uh, console, uh, you won't be able to get those on without taking the console back off. So let's go ahead and get number five in place. Okay, so for this step, again, it's just you tighten down both uh, button head bolts here, the Allen wrench button head bolts. You saw me use an impact, it's just easier because these have Loctite on it, so that way they don't move. But as you can see, now it's nice and stable, but the bottom have not been tightened yet. So this helps with getting the console on, but still gives it a little play to shift left and right to get this, uh, this unit on when we get to that step. 
So if there, again, if there's any questions or you have anything that you didn't see or I didn't cover in this video, please ask them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them for you. We just completed step six, right? So we're going to step seven here, attach the tray to the upright crossbar. We're going to use all four truss head screws and then tighten them. These two holes on this side, those two holes right there on the cut crossbar. And that's step seven. So we should see step seven here, right there. We use these four screws and it says to tighten them down. This is the tray piece here. Well, as you saw there, I got on my back to be able to get under there and get those, see those two screws right there, one and two. Same on the other side there, one and two. And now this tray is nice and secure. Let's go on to the next step. All right, so step number eight is attaching the two handrails to the left and right uprights here. Okay, do not fully tighten the screws yet. Be careful not to pinch the upright wire, of course, on the right side. And then remove and discard the two indicated screws. So let's go ahead and get these handrails installed. All right, so as y'all saw in step eight, it's just one button head screw. Make sure you get the star washer in there and remove these screws here. They were just made to be taken out and discarded. Next is gonna be getting the uh, cup holders in place on the console. We're gonna get the left and right screwed in there. But before we do that, like I said, make sure this is loose, this will help. And then you're gonna get a second screw here, but that's gonna be part of getting the console on there and everything. So. Just keep that in mind. We're making good time. You're doing great if you're doing this yourself. And then again, just leave the cable. It's got this little cutout half circle here where the main cable can rest, but make sure you don't pinch that cable when you get this arm on, okay? Step nine, do not over tighten the screws. You're gonna have eight screws right here. Step nine, four for each cup holder. So let's go ahead and do that. We got the two cup holders there in place. Uh, so now we are going to step 10 to avoid damaging the pulse crossbar. Do not use power tools and do not over tighten. So again, depending on how comfortable you are with power tools and how familiar you are with your tools, yes, you do not want to over tighten because you can strip or you can uh, pinch or crack plastic pieces, so on and so forth. Then it says start all four screws and then tighten them. What we're doing basically is removing the crossbar here. There's two or four screws in there, taking that off and then installing it on the two arms as you see here, okay? So we're gonna do that in time lapse, removing it and then installing it. So when you're done with step 10, you should have all three screws here tightened down same here and you want the bolts and screws to be about the same place in the holes on both sides so that way it's pretty even when you go to get the console there and attach it so that is the next step for step 11 is getting the console up here and getting this connection uh, first and then we're going to attach the console to the two upright mass there's only one way you can connect just don't force it It'll slide right into one another, okay? All right, so as y'all can see right now, it's still pretty loose. Okay, but we, got, we do have the four bolts in place here, or the four screws. And then let me just show you how to connect this guy, you got the male and female here, and I might be able to do it with one hand. You can see the clip is fully engaged, so that way it doesn't come out easily. Then you can take this wire out of here, because you don't need it anymore. But there we go, you take this guy out of here. All right, and then you drop this guy in the upright okay just like that and then for this step nordic track 
actually includes, again, just drop it in here, okay? Just wrap it around nice. Basically the whole idea is to not pinch the cable, right? And NordTrack provides you a zip tie here that is intended to go through this hole and behind the cable here, and you just zip tie it. I'm gonna do that off camera, but that's what you do, okay? Okay, so this is how you wanna have it end up looking just like that. And so now what we wanna do is, we're gonna wanna tighten these four screws down that support the entire console. But you also have to line up the bar here, basically, and get these all lined up and get the screws in place, right? And you want the top part, the top part of the handrail there to match up with the bottom and overlap properly. And it's not too difficult. One person can do it. Just take your time and you can get it done. All right, so there are a total of eight screws. You have six across the, uh, the handrail there and then two right here underneath. So make sure you get all those tightened down. Basically the way you want it to look when you're done and feel is this seam right here. You want it to be pretty even all the way across and the top overlapping the bottom part of the rail. And when you squeeze it, you don't want to be able to squeeze them together, right? They want to, you want it to be that tight, so. We got that done. Let's go on to the next step. All right, so step 15, again, is gonna get truss screws, four screws for each handrail cover, the left and the right handrail cover. As you can see here, it shows you push them forward to get under or overlapping here. Okay, so we'll do that in time-lapse. All right, just real quick, one thing I wanted to point about, point out about the uh, handrail covers is that the two outer screws go into the top plastic, whereas the two middle screws go into the metal handrail. So you're, it's gonna, it's gonna be a little more difficult. You're gonna need a little more torque to get these two screws into the metal handrail. When you go to screw into the metal with these two, just expect it to be a little more dif difficult, and you'll need to use a little more torque. All right, so the next step is to get the hydraulic bar in place and then get the hydraulic in place. It says have a second person hold the frame until step 18 is completed, but I'll just show you how I do it by myself. The star washers that you need here are still in the hardware packet, um, but the bolts are already screwed on to the bar there, if you can see it. So they're already in place, you just have to take them out. All right, so we're gonna do all, we're gonna do step 16 and 17 in time lapse. And then uh, end 18, right? This is getting it all there. And we'll firmly tighten the four screws, 19 here. And then we should be close to done or done. So that's how the hydraulic works. And as you saw, I got a second hand there, but you can do it on your own. Here, let's lift it. I'll show you how it works. So you just lift it up. It's really light now that the hydraulic is there and then you'll hear it click just like that. That means it'll stay. So that's in the storage position. And then in order to drop it, you got to lift it a little bit, push it up, push your foot there. And let it come down past the the top portion of that bottom part of the hydraulic and then it'll just it'll just come down on its own okay and then it'll slow down about halfway it'll go down even slower all right so very very nice feature there um, the next step of course after this getting this all done is going to the front here and getting the four main bolts that we started with at the beginning that we left loose underneath the plastic covers. We're gonna tighten those down and then we'll just snap the covers into place and we should be good to go.
As you saw the last two bolts here behind the upright, definitely use a, a ratcheting wrench or if you have a right angle tool um, or a flex bit or anything like that, you can do it that way with a power tool as well. But I had this and just decided to do that. All right, y'all, so it does come with a heart monitor strap here. So if you want to use that, you can use that. Of course, we are done as far as assembling. Way to stick it through with me, y'all. And then uh, just the, it's just downloading right now. The customer's setting it up. This big screen slash monitor does swivel a bit, as you can see here. There you go. So, so it does have some swiveling motion there, which is nice. Um, it does have a, an aux port right there. I didn't see a USB port, but you can do Bluetooth audio, and we already verified that the speakers work. We got one, two, three. So three, three modes. All right, so well, we're gonna run it, and then if we have to adjust the belt after we run it for a little bit, I'll show you all how to do it. But basically, you just use the tools that are included here, this red Allen wrench here, and you put it right here in the, in the two holes in the back. And in the manual, it'll tell you basically what you do if you wanna shift it a little bit to the right or to the left because it's off or it's not in the middle. You just turn it about a quarter of a turn, either clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on what direction you need that belt to move back here on the roller. And you just do that in a quarter inch turn increment. So you turn it a quarter, left or right, and then you run the belt for a few minutes, see how it adjusts. And if you need to adjust it more, then you stop it, you unplug the uh, treadmill completely from power, do another quarter turn either way, and then you eventually get it to where you, exactly where you need the belt. And then this commercial 2950, it comes pre-oiled, as you can see here. You don't need to put any oil on it, but I, as far as I know, NordicTrack will send you, uh, whether it's within a year's time or two years, it depends on every user, how long it takes before you need some uh, some oil put on there. So just reach out to NordicTrack on their customer service number, and I'm sure they'll send you all a bottle. So we're gonna run it and make sure everything's good, but we're pretty much done with the commercial 2950 runner's flex we ran the uh treadmill for about two minutes or so and as you can see here the gap on the left side is quite a bit narrower than the gap on the right so we need to shift or have the belt shifted to the right a little bit maybe about a quarter of an inch to a half inch and so the way this one works here this guy right here and what you're gonna do if the walking bell is off center, first remove the key and unplug the power cord, which we'll do. If the walking bell has shifted to the left, which for us it did, use the hex key to turn the left idler roller screw clockwise half of a turn. So only the left, we're gonna do it clockwise half of a turn, 180 degrees. And then what we'll do, then plug the power cord back in, let it run, see how it adjusts, and I'll, I'll show you all that. All right, we're gonna turn it off. Unplug it. This has two different sides on sizes on each end. You want the side with the bigger size here and just put it in there. You can feel it usually, right? So now it's locked in. We're going to do a half turn. So this will be facing upward when we're done. So a half turn clockwise. There we go. Right about there. Let's plug it in and get it running and see how it does, okay? Okay. We hit the reset because you got the it's on off there. I just did it as safety, and then we're gonna run it at about two to three miles per hour. Or this is the magnetic key that, again, if it comes off, it stops automatically. We already tested that, and it stops fairly quickly there, which is pretty cool. It looks like you have a camera too for the iFit, which is pretty sweet. So now you should see it shift to the right a little bit, and we want to balance that out. And it looks like it did. I know it's, it's hard to see it in real time, but it is evening out. It's becoming more even. And we'll go, we'll do the speed up to about two miles here. 2.5 miles. And let's see, we're gonna walk on it too. See if that helps it shift. And it, to my eye, I can see it actually did shift to the right a little bit and it looks more balanced now. You can take a tape measure out if you want and, and measure the gaps. 
Um, but yeah, we're, we're pretty much there. It looks good. It's definitely more centered now than before. All right, so well, there it is. Fully assembled, ready to go for the customer. Uh, once again, I hope this video helped you decide whether you want to assemble it yourself or if you need to hire someone. And as always here at Mastery Mayhem, I'm looking to uh, find you the best tools, tech, DIYs, and deals for you. We always appreciate your support. Definitely don't forget to enter our uh, huge live power tool giveaway. It's called Saturday Night Mayhem. There's a video on it specifically right here. You can check that out. All you gotta do to enter is uh, uh, subscribe, comment, and you have to be there at the live giveaway every Saturday night at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. So as always here at Mastering Mayhem, I only hope all the best to you and yours.